ट्रांसमिशन लाइन आर नॉट ओनली यूज टू डिलीवर दी पावर बट इट इज ऑल्सो यूज टू डिलीवर दी इम्पॉर्टेंट कम्युनिकेशन सिग्नल बिटवीन द डिफरेंट सब स्टेशन एंड वेन ट्रांसमिशन लाइन इज यूज टू डिलीवर द कम्युनिकेशन सिग्नल वेव ट्रैप्स आर रिक्वायर्ड इन दिस वीडियो वे विल लर्न अबाउट वाई वी नीड वेव ट्रैप्स हाउ वी कैन ब्लॉक कम्युनिकेशन सिग्नल फ्रॉम एंटरिंग द सब स्टेशन हाउ डू वेव ट्रैप वर्क and in the end we will also learn about where does this signal go communication signal when the wave traps block them is it goes into a earthing or is it goes to some other device that also we will learn so make sure you watch the video till the end so first let us start why do we need wave traps so as i mentioned the transmission lines do not only use to deliver the power but it is also used to deliver the communication signals now this method is used very widely and it is known as power line carrier communication or plcc now using this method there are different signals that we transmit it can be a voice communication data transfer remote metering uh, control between substations so if there are two different substation that control signals can also be delivered via the power line carry, carrier communication method and this method is widely used because it is economical since we are using the already available transmission network we save a lot of money there so that is the reason why this method is widely used and it is also accepted uh, in different different countries now to distinguish uh, between the uh, signals or the current that we are delivering at power frequency and the communication signal the di frequency difference is there so the power frequency signals or the current which is goes at 50 or 60 hertz right whereas the communication signal i'm calling it as communication frequency the communication frequency may vary from 40 kilo hertz to 500 kilo hertz so there is a huge difference between the frequency and imagine if you are transferring the communication signals via the transmission line and that signal enters into the substation right enters into the equipment which are only designed to carry or work on 50 hertz or either 60 hertz definitely it will have some adverse effect let's take an example of the transformer here if your transformer is designed let's say for 50 hertz now your communication frequency is coming let's say at 200 kilohertz so definitely it will have some adverse effect on the transformer and that is not what we want right we want to protect all our equipment in the substation in order to have a better reliability and that is the reason why the communication signals must be blocked at any cost right you should only allow uh, the power frequency signal and the communication signals must be blocked uh, while entering into the substation it should not enter in the substation and to block this high frequency signal the communication frequency signals we need to have some blocking device which will block the signal right and that is nothing but the wave trap or line trap now moving on to our second question how this high frequency signal can be blocked now let us understand the basic principle for that now as i mentioned the power frequency signal is at 50 hertz or it could be at 60 hertz right whereas the communication frequency will be from 40 kilo hertz to 500 kilo hertz right now in between these two signals the parameter that is distinguishing them is basically the frequency you see it is 60 hertz and it is 40 kilohertz to 500 kilohertz right and if we want to block this signal while entering into the substation what we have to do is we have to provide them some sort of opposition right uh, opposition that will be given to the high frequency signal and uh, the opposition will not be offered to the power frequency signal right that is what we need to do in ac circuits when we talk about opposition the term that comes into our mind is impedance 
बिकॉज इन एसी सर्किट्स वी डू नॉट रेफर द अपोजिशन एज रेजिस्टेंस वी रेफर इट एज एम्पिडेंस बाय द वे इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड इन लर्निंग अबाउट द बेसिक्स ऑफ ए सी सर्किट्स दैन यू कैन ज्वाइन माई फ्री कोर्स ऑन कोर्सेज डॉट द इलेक्ट्रिकल गाई डॉट इन द कोर्स इज एब्सोल्यूटली फ्री यू कैन गो एंड क्लैरिफाई ऑल योर बेसिक्स अबाउट द ए सी सर्किट्स द लिंक फॉर दैट कोर्स आई प्रोवाइड डाउन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन सो इन द ए सी सर्किट्स द अपोजिशन दैट वी यूज इज एम्पीडेंस राइट नाउ what type of opposition is dependent upon the frequency well we have two types one is the inductive reactance xl which is given by 2 pi fl so this is directly proportional with the frequency that means if your frequency is increasing the inductive reactance will increase the opposition will increase and if the frequency decreases the opposition will also decrease right this is one type of opposition that is dependent directly dependent upon the frequency there is another type of uh, opposition we have in ac and that is capacitive reactance xc which is 1 upon 2 pi fl now here you see in a uh, capacitive reactance the frequency is inversely proportional to the opposition that means if your frequency is increasing the opposition will decrease and vice versa right so these are the two oppositions that we have which depends upon the frequency definitely the xc will not be useful for us because we want to block the frequency uh, we want to block the high frequency signals here so the useful opposition that we have is inductive reactance xl here right so if we insert some inductive reactance into our transmission line or just before uh the substation definitely this will offer opposition to the high frequency signals and the wave traps basically works on this principle only it acts like, like a filter it will filter out the high frequency signal and only allow the uh power frequency signals right you understood the basic principle how we can give opposition to the signal basically by inserting inductive reactance by the way if you are finding this video helpful please comment helpful in the comment section and also like the video that way i'll understand this content this type of content is helping you so we have to add a big inductive reactance into the transmission line now what is what thing offer the inductive reactance of course an inductor a big coil right so here you can see on your screen we have a transmission line and we have added a big coil in series with the transmission line now this will definitely offer a very high impedance to the uh, uh, communication signal that is also traveling via the transmission line now this is one of the main part of the wave trap and it is known as the main coil now this coil is capable of carrying your rated uh, normal current let's say if the system is rated for 3150 ampere this coil is capable of carrying that current continuously right and also it is tested for the short time current that can happen let's say short circuit happens 40 kilo ampere for 3 second uh, the coil will also have the capability to carry that current right so that is the main coil this will offer the inductive reactance this will op offer the high impedance to the communication signal now the inductor of this coil is set in such a way that it will offer high opposition to the uh, communication frequency and very very low or almost negligible opposition to the power frequency signal so that there won't be any power losses but only inserting the inductive coil inside the transmission line will not solve the purpose because uh, we also need to define a particular band um, which will only be blocked so the communication can happen let's say from 100 kilohertz to maybe 300 kilohertz for example so we need to set this coil in a way in a fashion that or in a way that it will only block the signal that is from 100 kilohertz to 500 kilohertz and to achieve that what we have to do is we have to add a small device which is known as the tuning device in parallel with the coil now this is tuning device is nothing but a combination of rlc circuit now with the help of this tuning device we can set a particular frequency which will be filtered by the wave trap clear understood this is the second uh, important parameter uh, second important component of the wave trap 
again uh, this tuning device is uh, one of the delicate device and it must be protected uh, against the over voltages that may happen and to protect the device we are also using a lightning arrestor or a small spark gap in parallel with that so in case a surge happens it will be uh, catered by the lightning arrestor and the device will be protected right so these are the basic components of a wave trap a main coil uh, which is responsible for generating the inductive reactance uh, impedance then the tuning device which helps in tuning a particular range of frequency and then a lightning arrestor or spark gap which will help us in protecting the tuning device right so these are the main components now before we go and understand wh what happens when the uh, wave trap blocks the signals where the signals go let me show you some of the photographs of the wave trap for better understanding so you see this is the incoming transmission line and this can be the outgoing transmission line here it is the transmission line is connected the white portion what you can see right here is nothing but the coil of course the coil is insulated uh, the white area what you see is the insulation basically and to support this coil there is a structure also here and this wave trap is uh, mounted on a support insulator now there are different ways in which you can mount the wave trap which we will see in the coming slide now if you look what is inside you can see this is the coil what we just saw this blue device what you can see is the tuning device that we just discussed and this green part is basically a lightning arrestor this is the coil that we have the rings what you can see here here it is basically a corona ring and this thing is the bird barrier right now this is a open uh, this device is installed in an open atmosphere and it is hollow so it may happen that bird may go inside and that we don't want basically so to avoid that the bird barriers can also be provided with the wave trap now as i mentioned wave traps can be mounted in a different way the first method that you will see it is mounted directly on the gantry of the tower like what you can see on your screen or it can be mounted on a dedicated support insulator along with the structure so this is the support insulator and this is the support structure and this is the wave trap that we have mounted the third method is it can be directly mounted on the capacitive voltage transformer so this is a cvt and this is the wave trap or line trap so these are the three different methods you will generally find uh, uh, you are used to mount the wave trap now it is not necessary that all the substations will have the wave traps this only those substation will have the wave trap where the power line carrier communication is used now moving to our la moving to our last question that when the wave traps blocks the signal where does that signal go let us understand that now uh, what we discussed is that the communication signal should not enter into the substation it should go into the power line communication devices only right so here you can see let's say the signal is coming the wave trap will block the uh, communication frequency right here right it will only allow the power frequency signal to go and how that happens that we have already discussed now since the communication frequency or the communication signal is getting a position via this path what you can see so it will not choose this path the signal will try to identify another path which is offering him a less resistance less impedance less opposition right now if you notice uh, just next to the wave trap we have a capacitive voltage transformer now generally you will see a uh, substation will have capacitive voltage transformer or if the capacitive voltage transformer is not available then the coupling capacitors will be provided now it is necessary to provide this along with the wave trap why because we want to deliver the communication frequency to the communication device and capacitors helps in achieving that how let us understand so as i mentioned the communication frequency will try to identify a different path where it will have a less opposition and that it will get via the capacitor why because we discussed the capacitive reactance is inversely proportional to the frequency so for high frequency it will offer a very less opposition 
right so definitely what will happen is the communication signal will come and instead of going into the web traps it will go into the cvt like what you can see on your screen and from cvt it will be delivered to the communication devices now cvt will have arrangements for the connection of power line carrier communication uh, equipment as well that is the advantages of having cvt it serves two purposes one it is an instrument transformer which helps us in monitoring the voltage and also giving inputs to the relay in case of a fault condition and it also serves as a uh, intermediate device between the signals and the communication device so this is how the wave traps works that's how the uh, signal travel via the capacitor voltage transformer and to the communication device right so that is all about the wave traps i hope this video has given you a clarity about how wave traps works and if you found this video helpful then do comment helpful in the comment section and also like the video in that way i'll also understand that okay the content that i'm producing is also helping you guys right and if you are still watching this video then i would like to congratulate you because you are one of the few people who are interested in learning right so thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next one but till then keep watching keep learning